Greetings once again, Highlanders fans, and welcome to GoHighlanders.com's coverage of the 2012 baseball season. We sat down with head coach Doug Smith to get his take on the upcoming season. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, John. Well, before we get to 2012, as usual, we take a look back at the previous year, 2011. How did the season turn out, especially compared to how you thought it might turn out heading into it? You know, the, the season turned out, to be honest with you, a little disappointing. Uh, I thought we had a nondescript year. Uh, you're safe back there. Uh, I thought it was a bit of a nondescript year. We didn't achieve as highly as I thought we could have with, uh, with the team that we had coming back. Uh, but it is what it is, and, and you've just got to move on from it. Uh, so we, we had a number of guys. We had seven guys drafted off last year's club. We had um, six seniors graduate on time. Those types of things are obviously successful. Well, speaking of those who graduated and moved on, can you give us a rundown of who we did lose from last year's yeah, squad? Yeah, we, we, we lost a lot. Um, as you work around the field, we lost Ryan Getz, who was a first-team All-Big West player uh, drafted by the Marlins. Uh, we lost Trevor Hairgrove, who was a first-team All-Big West player drafted by the Angels. Uh, we lost Brian Horst, who started uh, various points during his career at second, short, and first uh, during his four years. Uh, we lost Justin Schultz in right field, who was a first-team All-Big West player and an All-American as a junior, uh, drafted by the Houston Astros. Uh, we lost Tony Nix, another guy that was a first-team All-Conference <laughs> player. There seems to be a theme here. Uh, was drafted by the Nationals. Uh, and we lost Dan Pellegrino, uh, who was drafted by the Giants. Uh, those are the position players, and, and that is obviously a, a significant portion of it. On the mound, we lose Matt Andres, who was a third-round pick of uh, the San Diego Padres. We lost Mike Wolford, who was drafted by the Rockies. We lost Dustin Emmons, who was drafted by the Mets. Um, we lost Kevin Dickey to graduation. Um, again, a significant portion of our innings and our success. So uh, we have a lot to replace. Um, and we've got our work cut out for us. Well, you do have some folks coming back, particularly on the pitching staff. Let's take a yeah. quick look at the pitchers. Who's back from last year? You know, the guys that, that are most uh, most obvious, uh, we get back, and we're very fortunate to bring back Eddie Orozco, a fifth-year senior. Uh, Eddie graduated, chose to come back and get his master's degree as opposed to sign, uh, which was a real plus for us. Uh, bring, back, bring back uh, Trevor Frank. Uh, who pitched in the weekend rotation both his freshman and sophomore years. Uh, we bring back Dylan Stewart, who was the freshman pitcher of the year in our conference and a freshman All-American, uh, as well as Joey Dunyon, who we plan on throwing at the end of the bullpen. We bring back Mitch Petito, who was a freshman All-American, Gavin Mills, Ben Doucette, Mark Garcia. So we bring some guys back um, that are good, and they've been in our program. They just haven't had... Uh, some of those guys as significant a role as they're now going to have. Uh, and that's always the test. Can you step up to the next level? We're, we think they can, uh, and we'll find out soon. Well, and most of the people you named outside of Frank and Orozco were relief pitchers from yes. a year ago. Yes. Are some of them expected to make the transition into the starting rotation? And if so, what's that like for someone who came in as a freshman and was a reliever? Well, you know, all of those guys in high school were starters, and they were starters primarily most of their career or all of their career until they got here. Um, we recruit a few guys that aren't starters in high school, so they've done it. Uh, it'll just be a matter of transitioning back to it. And during the fall, we, we throw everybody, we try and extend them out as if they would be starters. Um, so um, they should be prepared for it. It's the bigger adjustment to go from the high school guy that was the starter, that was the guy, to now all of a sudden you're in the bullpen. That's a difficult transition for most guys. So who among those relievers can we expect to get a run at a starting slot? Well, right now um, our starting rotation is going to consist of, on, on Friday, we're going to throw uh, Dylan Stewart, who was out of the bullpen last year. Uh, in game two of the series, we're going to throw Eddie Orozco, uh, and we're going to throw Trevor Frank in game three. And then we're going to move our closer from the last couple of years, Mitch Petito. He will start on Tuesday. Uh, against San Diego State. So two of the guys were out of the bullpen last year and now are going to jump into the rotation. And, uh, you know, they're both very capable. Uh, we'll just see how they handle the transition. Staying with the pitching staff, who are the newcomers to the pitching staff that we should see pitch a few innings this year? Yeah, we've, we've got a couple of new guys. Um, Antonio Gonzalez out of Damian High School is, has had a very, very good fall. Uh, not a newcomer, but a guy that's redshirted for us last year, Zach Varela, and was, was ill most of the year, not hurt, uh, but ill, has rebounded, and he's had a great fall and a great January. I anticipate him 
um, stepping in. Uh, another guy that was hurt last year, Ben Doucette, uh, had a very good fall, and we anticipate a lot out of Ben. Um, I think those will be the new guys that will see the most significant innings. Let's move it down back to the, uh, to the fielding positions and the lineup where you have a few folks to replace. Who's back from last year? Well, we bring back uh, a couple of guys who had significant playing time. David Andres, uh, who was an honorable mention all Big West player, returns. Uh, Eddie Young, who has started on and off for the last two years, returns. Uh, Phil Hollinsworth, who started most of the time in, in left field for us last year, returns. Um, that's about it uh, from, from the returning starters. Um, Cody Hope, who was with us last year, uh, will step up and, and is finding his way into the starting uh, lineup for us. And then we've got a bunch of new guys. <laughs> a bunch of new guys. Well, do you know all the new guys' names? Can we ask you to... I know some of them. Um, one of the older guys that I, that I neglected to mention, we bring back uh, Bart Stepanovich behind the plate, and Bart will be uh, uh, starting behind the plate for us, uh, along with um, Clayton Prestridge, a transfer from... Uh, Golden West Community College was the MVP of the Orange Empire League, which is one of the premier junior college leagues in California, um, and Drake Zarati, a freshman out of Norco High School. Those three guys uh, will split time behind the plate, with Bart probably doing the bulk of it. At first base, we bring back uh, uh, Vince Gonzalez, who played part-time last year, and, and uh, Kyle Boudreau, who DH part-time for us last year. Prestridge also plays first base. Um, around the other side of the infield, uh, as we get on the left side, Hollinsworth will move in from the outfield to third base. Uh, we have two freshmen at shortstop with uh, um, Alex Rabanowitz and Nick Vilter. Uh, both of them got a chance to be really good college players. They're both very, very good defenders. Um, they both got a chance to hit, and they'll both uh, split time at shortstop. I'm very comfortable with them. Uh, Eddie Young returns at second base. Uh, in the outfield, um, Andres will move from the DH spot to right field. Uh, we have a freshman in center field by the name of uh, Devin Belosky out of Vista Del Lago High School. Uh, that is, he's going to be an outstanding college player. Along with him, we have a drafted guy by the Yankees by the name of Cody Stewart out of Great Oak High School that also can play center and left. Um, those guys, along with Prestridge again, uh, we'll move Clayton around, we'll be in the outfield, as well as A.J. Beckley returning off of last year's club. Off of last year's club, we lost about 70% of our offense, of our RBIs and our runs scored. So those freshmen are going to have to, you know, they're going to have to step up and do something. And the guys that played uh, last year that were supporting players are going to have to step up and be feature players. Um, so we've got our challenges for us offensively. Well, when we've had these discussions in previous years, you've mentioned to me about your lineup, that you're the kind of guy who likes to plug in nine, ten guys, <laughs> sit back, and then uh, and then watch for a few innings and make some pitching yeah. changes. It sounds like this year you're going to have more buttons to push or at least more options, uh, at least until you get a feel for the team? No question. Uh, we may be, while we're young, we're more athletic than we've been the last couple of years. So we can do some things. Uh, we can run a little bit better than we used to. I think we'll be better defensively than we have been. And we do have some more flexibility. So rather than nine or 10 guys playing, I would suspect we're going to have 12 to 14 guys uh, playing. Um, as the season goes along, I'm sure that will shorten, the, shorten itself up. Some guys will, will step up and perform better than you think, and others won't perform as well. Um, and we'll just have to see how that shakes out. Well, also this time last year, we talked about the change in the NCAA bats. Yeah. And it did seem to have an impact on offenses uh, around the country. One year in, do you even think about it, talk about it anymore, or the game has just changed? And well, I think you have to be aware of it. The game has just changed, and, and we changed a little bit in our recruiting philosophy. Uh, we tried to get a little bit more athletic. We tried to run a little bit better. Uh, where in the past we have been more power-oriented, I would say that that's probably not as much the case anywhere uh, anymore. I still like to hit the ball over the fence. It just doesn't happen as much uh, as it used to. So, yeah, we've got to address it, um, and we talk about it every day about how we have to be more well-rounded offensively. Well, the schedule, as usual, 
one yeah. of the tougher ones, uh, non-conference as well as conference, the Big West, one of the best baseball conferences in the nation. Once again, what's the, the philosophy uh, in terms of your non-conference schedule and how it prepares you for the Big West? You know, we do like to test our guys. Uh, I think it's important to, to get ready for conference, and if we get to postseason, obviously you're going to have to be accustomed to playing uh, that level of play. So we open with a very, very good BYU, BYU club uh, coming in. We have San Diego State right after that. Then we go through a stretch where we go to Arizona State, we go to Sam Houston State, and we go to Fresno State. So we're going to get tested very, very strong early in our season, uh, and it'll be interesting to see how we respond to it. Uh, I'd like to think we can respond positively to it. I think we're going to pitch well enough, and I think we're going to play good enough defense uh, that we'll be in all the games, and if we perform offensively, we'll have a chance to win. So. Um, I'm looking forward to those. Uh, I'd like to get in those uh, hostile environments, if you will. I think it's good for the growth of our, of our team. Um, I just like doing it. Well, looking at conference play, as I mentioned, the Big West always difficult. How does it shake out this year based on what you've seen from some fall play and uh, maybe talking to other coaches and where do the Highlanders fit into the mix? Yeah. The coaches poll came out and uh, we were picked uh, to finish in the middle of the pack. But where, yeah, do you, where do you see I think, this? I think based on what we lost, uh, I think that's probably a prudent pick by everybody because nobody knows what you have yet when, when you have all freshmen. I think our conference is more wide open than it's been in a long time. I think if you look at the perennial best teams, Fullerton lost a lot. Um, and while I'm certain that they'll be good, they lost the majority of their pitching staff. I think they bring back one of their starters, so that's going to be difficult to overcome. Irvine, for me, is, is, the, is the top team. They bring back a lot off a very, very good club who was one out, one strike, actually, away from getting to a Super Regional last year. I think the, the face of our conference changes a little bit. New head coach at UC Davis, new head coach at Fullerton, uh, new head coach at UC Santa Barbara. So styles of play that we've maybe get a cut, been accustomed to, uh, maybe they change a little bit. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. I think that we'll be competitive in the conference. Um, what that means, I don't know yet. We're, we're going to have to get there and find out. Well, we, you mentioned all the players that we had drafted. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention there's a bit of a streak going on over the past three years of former Highlanders walking away with uh, World Series rings this past <laughs> year. Mark Zepchinski actually got to pitch and pitch frequently. Uh, I know you got a chance to see him recently. He came yeah. back for the alumni game and has been around. A hundred questions come to mind, but what's that do to the program to have those kind of guys pitching high-profile innings? In well, I, I think it's really important because every time one of those guys gets on TV in those situations, uh, UC Riverside gets mentioned. And aside from the obvious pride that we have that one of our guys is doing that and being successful, and the enjoyment we have watching Zepp or Runzler or one of those guys do that, it helps us in the recruiting world because all of those high school guys out there also see Mark Zepchinski from UC Riverside. So when we're recruiting them, um, that becomes a very real goal uh, to see Matt Andrees drafted in the third round again last year uh, after being about a 40th round draft out of high school again. I think that serves as well in the recruiting world, um, and it's, it's good to see. Of the folks we now have floating around the minors, who has the best chance of getting a call up? Well, I think this year we, it's an interesting thing. We have a guy. We have a chance to have three guys pitching in the Cardinals uh, major league team. I mean, obviously with Mark there, Adam Reifer is on their 40-man roster, um, and will probably get there this year. Uh, Joe Kelly is in their top 10 prospects, and he's been invited to big league camp for the second year in a row. Uh, and Joe's going to run it up there at 96, 97 miles an hour. So it wouldn't be a surprise to see him get there. Uh, Daniel Stang is close to getting back to the major leagues for his second stint. I think Drew Garcia with the White Sox has an opportunity to get up. Drew is maybe as good a defender as I have ever been around in college baseball and has, and has been named the best defensive infielder in their system a couple of times. Played on Team USA uh, this summer and I think Drew's going to get to the major leagues this year and that'll be, that'll be fun to see. Well, in addition to new players, you also have a new coaching staff. You yeah. had a few people join you, including a former Highlander. Yeah. Why don't you run down the list of the three new coaches we have and tell us what they bring to the organization. You know, one of the things that we had going for us for a number of years is we didn't have any turnover in our coaching staff, and that's a great thing because of the continuity. Um, because we've had some success and those guys did a good job, they've all had an opportunity to, to get different jobs, maybe a little step up in responsibility, and so we've had to get some new guys. 
Um, one of the advantages of having new guys is they, they come in and challenge some of the things uh, in terms of how we've done them long term and make us rethink it. Um, so that part of it has been fun, uh, rethinking some of the things that we do and it reinforces some of the things that we do and makes us change some of the things that we do. But we brought in Bobby Applegate uh, from BYU, uh, an interesting scenario with our opening series being against BYU. Uh, Bobby was there for eight years, was at the Air Force Academy uh, for seven years before that. Um, he's thrilled to be at sea level. He's pitched, uh, been a pitching coach at a couple places at high altitude. Um, I've known Bobby for a long time. Uh, really a good coach, really a good person, thrilled to have him. Um, helping Bobby in the bullpen, uh, Chris Smith, who pitched for us in 2002, uh, pitched in the major leagues with the Red Sox and the Brewers, had a 10-year professional career. Uh, Chris has come back to get his degree and is our undergrad assistant, um, a tremendous addition to our staff. Instant credibility, obviously, being an ex-major leaguer, but earns that credibility based on what he does. Uh, a tremendous addition. I'm really glad to have him. Uh, Bryson LeBlanc. Uh, joins us from the University of Oregon. Uh, I've known Bryson for a few years. He's been at Oregon for four years. Uh, brings a lot of things to the table that, that we have not done very well in the past. Um, so he is a great addition. The one lone holdover is our volunteer, Brett Martinez, and Brett's with us for year four. Um, I'm thrilled to have Brett back. He's, he's a great coach. Uh, he's a great person. Uh, and I'm glad to at least have somebody that knows my name. <laughs> Well, Coach, thanks so much for joining us today. Good luck this season, and uh, hopefully we'll be watching the Highlanders climb the top of the standings this year in the Big West Conference and hopefully shooting for an NCAA bid. Thanks, John. I appreciate it.